episode number 16 with Stephen Daniel. Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Stevie B. And Dan G. Dan G. How the hell are you, sir? I'm pretty good, my homie log. I'm doing okay. Good, good, good. You getting ready? Uh, we got an update for uh, for everyone. Daniel's coming down to join uh, Joe and I. Well, let's get that straight. I was kind of, it was more like, you need to get the hell down here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was it was more of a forcible issue. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like, what are you still doing in California? You need to come to Nicaragua. But, uh, yeah, this place is just too good. But, yeah, uh, I, I just have to let go of every possible thing I'm doing right now, which is a lot, and yes. just drop everything and dog kennel and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Like, I have nothing going on in my life, and I'm just just gonna just leave. Which yeah, I let am. me just let me just drop. <laughs> everything <laughs> get down there at the, it'll be worth it though man uh so a little update uh joe and i have been looking at properties for the last since since the last time you and i recorded together which was probably a month ago and, it's been property uh, mania yeah and we we're looking at places all down in san juan the price is really depressed right now down in san juan because um it's um um they're highly dependent on tourism and there hasn't been much tourism. They had a little government coup here, uh, some um, protests and stuff in 2018. And since then, there hasn't been much tourism. It started to come back and then boom, COVID hit. And then it's it's like a tourism ghost town. There's people selling sunglasses to thin air because there's no one there to buy them. <laughs> so property values, you know, like we looked at one place that was uh, 200 grand and now they're selling it for 80. Eight. Yeah. Oh, I think and, it was 88 actually, but you know. Oh yeah. 88. Oh, they, or, but the, my point is like it, everything is just depressed. Every single thing we look at like that, yeah. you know, uh, it, it used to be a million. Now it's 293. Like it's, half off. Yeah, a third. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like uh, a Kmart blue light special going on right now in Nicaragua. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, anyways, it looks like you, me and Joe are going to go in on something and uh, just kind of throw our hat in the market for it. I, I, you know, and I think it's a good, five-year bet maybe 10 i don't care i just want to go surf <laughs> you're there for the, there for the waves I just want to, i'm gonna pop up an airbnb and go surfing <laughs> right well you'll be able to do that yeah i don't know what you guys want to do but that's what i'm doing <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we'll see we got uh one that we looked at here in esteli we're back in the uh, cigar town and um it, uh, Which is, Steve, how far away, just so people know, how far away is Esteli, the cigar factory town that doesn't rely on tourism, uh, away from, from the ocean? San Juan San del Juan. Sur? Yeah. yeah uh, from San Juan del side. Sur, it's four and a half, five hour drive. Oh, wow. It's, okay. Distance wise, it's only like, uh, I think like 150 kilometers. But you got to understand the, the, the best highway here is the one that we take all the way up there. And it's a two lane road with trucks that are doing 20 miles an hour and you got to pass. And it's just like your average speed is like, you know, 25 miles an hour. It's uh, can't, can't, I can't wait to drive that at night. Oh yeah. 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 We'll have a blast with that. So yeah. Might as well just get a, get a case of beer and get on the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you'll, you'll see what it's like when you get out of here, but there's one place that we looked at, you saw the video that I sent you, Daniel, of uh, mm -hmm. the one in Esteli. Uh, they go by Monsanas out here, which one Monsana equals 1.74 acres. And he wants 15 K for one Monsana. So almost two football fields of land will, uh, for 15 K. And he has, when we went there, he said, he said he wanted to sell one Monsana and we're like, oh, I guess it's worth a look. And then he, by the t end of the conversation, he's like, oh, maybe I'll sell up to five. So this guy has a huge amount of land. And uh, from what um, the people that we're staying with, you know, they kind of know people on the hillside. They're like, the guy's in debt. So it could be a good bailout for him and a good opportunity for us. I don't know. Um, it has a road and it has electricity. Problem is, uh, it doesn't have any water on the property. 
Uh, so we'll have to get a well. <laughs> and ironically, <laughs> so I. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Here we go. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the dragons and water witchers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're getting a couple of water witchers out there in two or three days, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be pretty expensive. It's going to be forty bucks to bus uh, the two of them in and pay them for the day and send them home, uh, but. Uh, We'll uh, uh, at least get them out there and see if there's a pot. If they both point at the same spot, maybe get a third one. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see what they say. Do you, do you have any experience with water witchers? No, only dragons, Steve. It's a dragons. Yeah. 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 <laughs> After the water witchers here, uh, we're going to have to move on to uh, dragons and specifically, I guess, a baby <laughs> dragon uh, is what we need. And, uh, yeah. so I wasn't able to find any baby dragons, but I got, um, I bought a dragon egg off of a guy. Uh, of course, what else would you be doing? It was pretty expensive, but I figured it was worth it. Ironically, you know, you'd think a dragon egg would be really big, you know, like something bigger than an ostrich egg, but it's not, it's actually the exact same size as a chicken egg. Hmm. Um, so Duh. yeah, he, he I mean, promised me does to, that. <laughs> yeah, he he promised me it'll hatch by uh, Monday, and before you get here, we'll have a baby dragon. So. Cool, and hopefully uh, water. Yeah, and hopefully water too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with with like the wishbone stick. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so a water witcher. I have experience uh, with two of them. It was on my folks' property up in Idaho that they were looking for water in a well. My dad hired uh, two water witchers. Were they indigenous? One of them, were they? Like, uh, we... No, they were. Um, some no, I think they were both hanging white. out. Yeah, I truck? think they were both white. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, one guy had a willow stick, and he walked around the property. And when the thing went down, then uh, you know he said that there's water there, and so he stepped off to the side, and then the the, the willow stick it's it's shaped like a Y, you know, and uh, the willow it's stick a forked went, stick. Yeah, it's like a fork stick. Yeah, uh, yeah. it looks exactly like a Y, and. Um, he uh, would step off to the side and the stick would go up and then he'd step off over where the spot was where there was water and the stick would go down and he kept doing that and he was counting in increments of, I believe it was six or something. And anyways, he found the spot where there's a well now and so did another guy that used two bent uh, welding rods. Um, and I remember one of them called it down to the foot he said at 426 feet, that's where you'll hit water. And that's pretty at, 400, impressive. at 426 feet, we hit water. Both of them also said there might be a small vein of water down around 270 feet. And what happened was at 270 feet, we got a bunch of green minerals type stuff that came up, uh, but no water. And then when we hit 426, that same green mineral stuff started coming up again and we hit water. So my theory, and my dad's was too, uh, is that maybe they're, what they're actually looking for is like that little, whatever that green mineral was, and it's not actually reacting with water because they both said those two spots, and, um, and one guy called it down to the foot. Um, That's kind of crazy because there's no science to this whole thing. No, I, I, now that I'm actually hiring one, I did some Google research, and there's no scientific thing that can back it up, and some articles were saying like, you know, maybe they've been doing this for so long and they've seen what, where water actually is and where it isn't that subconsciously, uh, they're basically just picking the spot. And, um, they, they, with these willow sticks and, and welding rods, you can make little microscopic, um, um, movements in your arms and forearms and it will naturally move them. So, so for anybody out there who wants to find some water on their land, yeah. <laughs> a local water witcher, I'm sure Craigslist has a few of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a water dowser. Yeah. And yeah. after that, you're going to need a baby dragon. Yeah, baby dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This kind of sounds like a little fantasy land going on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're so out in the jungle. We'll if it, Monday will be very entertaining. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna do some like special dances like i mean are you gonna have to feed them uh i don't know we haven't got into that but if we do i can't be more than a couple dollars <laughs> but it's uh, very fascinating it makes for a good story it does yeah yeah it'll be interesting nonetheless i'll, I'll take a video and throw it up on twitter so you can... oh no you gotta take pictures of these guys man you yeah video <laughs> pictures yeah i want to i want to see some like 
some like indigenous stuff going on here, dude. Well, the local here where we're staying on this property, she said that they use, I think, a strap of leather, unless I was misunderstanding. Oh, yeah, of course. Why would uh, I mean? But she got three people <laughs> before they bought this place, and all three of them pointed at the same spot where the well is now. So, oh, wow. These are some so, of the, two of those okay. three, one of them is dead. Uh, we're getting to do this other place. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. How do you know that he died? Did she, she tell told you me. he died? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She did this 11 <laughs> years a... ago, and, and yeah. two of them are still alive. So, okay. Uh, well, that's a pretty good resource. Then, okay. You know, I can, I'm going in on this whole thing. So, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You got a third, you got a third interest in this, bro. So, let's see what <laughs> Yeah, it's not necessarily an easy sell. I don't know what the water witchers and all. <laughs> oh, man. It, um, Still yeah, don't know so, what we're doing with it. <laughs> you know, when you see it, you'll have an appreciation. There's uh, most of the property is in this wooded um, area with a bunch of trees that are like 100 years old. And the wood is very, very valuable. And uh, they use it to make furniture. Um, Great. We, we're going to be chopping gonna, down... We're going to be in the furniture forest. business, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to make chairs. We're going to become, you know, we're going to be like those terrible people that like knock down indigenous trees. <laughs> yes. Great. Whitey Great. came in and just destroyed it. Yeah. Why, yeah. Oh man. I'm not chopping down any, any, any old trees, man. If they fall down with the lightning, that's cool. But like, yeah. You know. That's what the guy that does that owns it right now. He said, when they fall down, then I harvest them. He said, but I don't cut any of them. That's fair. So not I, I think that's a good way to do it. I mean, if if it's in an area where we're going to build a perfect house and there's a couple trees in the way, then cut them down. But um, as far as like, yeah, I, I don't have any interest in cutting those things down. It, it just it that's what makes the the land there in that spot. You know, you're you're in a forest, and um, and then the other one, uh, another area of land, probably a football field and a half worth, um, has an amazing view of the city. And it has several like terraced flat spots um, that I don't believe are bulldozed. I think I think they're natural, and um, yeah, it'd be a great spot to uh, uh, build um, whatever we want: uh, condos, apartments, um, some kind of business. You know? Um, no, man. I want I want to own a disco club. The white. We could tiger. do that there too. We could I want do the that. The white there. tiger. Yeah. <laughs> if the water dowsers find uh, water. Yeah, <laughs> got to get the water gotta, witchers in there. <laughs> you got to get the water witchers. All right. Well, now everybody knows what to do to find water. <laughs> yep. Yep. So interesting. Yeah. But then there's also opportunities in San Juan where, like, you know, you saw the video. It was, it was 0.78 acres, um, flat land, uh, turnkey, really, because, uh, you know, no house or anything on it. Um, it has water and power at the site. You know, a little so bit more have, plug and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, and I think the best property on that entire uh, suburb, you know, there's 30 lots there and probably 16 to 18 have full built houses on them. And there's the other 12 or 14 that, you know, are blank lots like this one. And this is the only one. No, this is one of three that are for sale in there. It's the cheapest one. And I think it's the best lot in the whole place. I mean, like, it's got the best view. Like, um, Yeah, ocean view um road there you know paved you road u utilities uh, um water. yeah so, but what is it i think um it's around around about 80 dollars a square foot to build 70 a square uh, foot to build yeah yeah so, so uh yeah i was talking i was talking to one guy so he said it's kind of fluctuates between set if you're not there uh, like if you get something built and you're not you know you, you're not there to watch everything you know then it goes up to about a hundred Okay. So, okay. But if you're there, it's like that 70, 80 kind of thing. So I, I would have to be there. Like, Yo, like, yeah, I, 100. I, I would be terrified yeah. if like, I have a friend actually that I used to work with. He's building um, on three acres of land, this mansion house. I can't remember how many thousands of square feet it is. Uh, his own lap pool. He likes to swim. Is this um, your uh, retired, retired farm yeah. guy? Oh, the yeah. one in Panama. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that guy with the drone footage. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and he uh, uh, yeah, he's little... not there during construction. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a, that's a little scary. I uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. I would want to be there. I'd want to experience it. Make sure that they're actually putting outlets where I want them, and and they're not cutting corners by a not. A lot, building. yeah. They will no. cut corners. Oh. People cut corners here in the states all the time if you don't watch them. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. What are they going to do in a third world country? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I don't know. We'll see how his house turns out when it's done. Then uh, we'll go down and check it out. Well, he's definitely not leaving his house because it's like four hours away from any town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we got a uh, we got a review. Oh, that's always yes. nice. Uh, this is from uh, Stinkbug. Stinkbug, uh, what's up? Yes. <laughs> Five stars. Thank you, Stinkbug. Dude, right on, uh, Stinker Bugs. Loving it, man. That's cool. Thank he you. He says, uh, "Great show." Time. Stephen Daniel, host of In It to Win It uh, podcast, highlight all aspects of investing and more in this can't miss podcast. The host and expert guests offer insightful advice and information that is helpful to anyone that listens. So thank you. Thank you, yeah, bro. I appreciate awesome. that. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. At, every little um, bit counts. Yes, every little bit. Every little bit. You know, I, um, I realized since I've been out here, I was kind of like missing some of the news. And so I went on my uh, phone uh, to try to get like local news in America. And the first thing that pops up and probably the most important thing in when it comes to world events, uh, mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian uh, is now a platinum blonde. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think yeah. I've been sending you guys little uh, snips of, uh, you know, really important news down there, too. Yeah, yeah, super important. I want to know how all the celebrities are doing and all yeah. the people that I just do not give two shits about. Yeah, well, you, you know, Chloe's going, is it Chloe or Courtney is going out with Travis Barker now. So you guys are really missing out on some big stuff going oh, on. Oh, man. Yeah, that yeah. sounds uh, yeah. pretty, pretty important. Yeah, uh, they're, and just so you know, they're uh, they're going to be canceling the Kardashian show or I guess it's ending. So oh. I know you're going to be pretty hurt about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll cry myself to sleep tonight. Well, you know, just have a few drinks, you know, you'll you'll, you'll get through it. Okay. Yeah, I'll pour one out for the homies and and yeah, uh, pour one out for the homies. <laughs> finish the All bottle good. of wine myself. Well, just just a single tear just goes down my cheek. <laughs> yeah. Smile now, cry later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you guys are you guys are really missing out on some really important stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. Um, uh, oh, what uh, you were telling me? Uh, um, you almost killed your aunt with uh, with some crackers or tortilla chips or something. No, I actually have. Uh, I have. Well, I have. This, they're, they're twins, but they're my godsons. Okay. God, I have no reason. I have no idea why they want want to make me their godfather. To be completely upfront with you, <laughs> that was a drunken decision worst. one night, and they realized yeah. after they told you they couldn't take it back. Yeah, you know what? I think it was definitely something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, they invited me to their house. They don't have me often because I'm, I guess I'm a little much to handle. Um, but they invited me to their house. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to make you guys an appetizer. And, you know, I have to be very, I have to be careful what I make, what's in it. So like, I'm, you know, they got like all these allergies and, you know, like they're just allergic to a lot of things. So I just made this kind of ceviche thing, made sure everything was fine. I know my one uh, good friend, uh, he he's he has some intolerances to, I don't know if it's gluten, but I didn't even know. It's, yeah. I think it was whatever. I had, I had to use corn chips for the dip as opposed to like saltines. So I took the saltines for some people, you know, just the regular crackers and you dip in this kind of like shrimp avocado ceviche kind of thing that I make, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm covering all my bases. You know, I take the, you know, the corn chips and then I take the saltines, but they taste better with the saltines. So I said, you know, well, everybody else can have the saltines and he can have the corn chips. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. No big deal. So uh, the boys are at the house and his wife's there. And, you know, this is like one of those, you know, this is like you know, quintessential little you know, uh, Saturday evening, little barbecue kind of thing going on, you know, with the family. Yeah. And so I show up slightly whirlwind and, uh, say, Hey, give me a drink. What's going on guys. The, the godsons are really happy to see me. And I'm like, Hey, I made you this really awesome appetizer. And the kids are all excited. And all of a sudden I bring out the chips and they're like, okay, Hey, I'm for my, my friend, I won't mention his name, but I'm like, here's the corn chips. Fantastic. He's like, you know, I can have this. This is good. And then all of a sudden, Guess what comes out of the bag? The saltine crackers. The saltine crackers. <laughs> Literally, one of the boys picks up the saltine crackers out of the bag. And all of a sudden, I look over like I brought the devil into the house. <laughs> 
I was like, what's going on? Like, everybody's looking at me. They're looking at each other. I'm like, <laughs> what, what am I not seeing? <laughs> what am I not seeing? Like, what is going on here? And his wife starts kind of palpitating a little bit. <laughs> like, like, oh, and then I just hear this, you know, she shouts to the one of the boys, you know what to do. <laughs> I was like, what the frick is going on here? And, I guess she's completely allergic to, I guess, the gluten in the crackers. Oh, I don't wow. know. And she's and, and the boys knew what to do with it. They're like, they had to get a bag and put the saltine crackers in a bag and, and put them outside. And everybody was like kind of hysterical for five minutes. And I literally thought that they were listening to the previous podcast. Yeah, they're fucking and with I, you. And they were fucking with me. And this was like some kind of joke. And then, like, after about three or four minutes, I realized it's not a joke. <laughs> like, this they're, is getting crazy. They're, they're like, so white oh. and they're so allergic to gluten that they actually have, like, this uh, fire drill uh, prep. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> to get yes. Rid of it. <laughs> it was like, it was going to be airborne and it, she can't be around it at all. And oh, I was like, wow. I was like, like, you had just brought in the bubonic plague into their uh, house and set it on the counter. Yeah, I like I had tuberculosis in a bag, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so was, and he literally like got the like you know just your grocery bag, you know, plastic. Got the crackers, put them all in the bag. I mean, they were still in the box, by the way. They weren't yeah. even opened yet. Oh, they weren't even open. They were. You they didn't just like pour yet. them over a plate or anything. No, like, no, I didn't open them or anything. They were still. They're in still the box. sealed. Yeah, still sealed. He puts them in a bag, ties it, double knots it, puts a Boy Scout <laughs> knot on it. And like, you know, is holding it out, you know, completely away from his body and taking it outside. I'm like, I'm like, is this for real? Like, I completely thought they were messing with me. And then they went into the whole airborne gluten story. And I'm like, hey, man, in Spanish, we go, we say demasiado. It means too much. I'm like, demasiado, demasiado, dude. I can't, man. like, this is, this is a topper. <laughs> this oh, is a truth. For one thing, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's not listening. I'm sure he is. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh man, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, so yeah, anyways, that's my yeah, that's my <laughs> next level gluten story. <laughs> yeah, he essentially brought a dead baby into there. I, think. I literally, yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> oh <my like>. God. <laughs> well i won't be doing um, that again anytime you know what soon. to do <laughs> yeah yeah he was like you know what to do i was like oh my god this is like a re it was like it was rehearsed yeah. previously <laughs> it was obviously not the first time they'd done that no it wasn't the first time they they definitely have gone through the motions before because everybody knew what to do yeah everyone had a job <laughs> one everybody person had opened a job. the door and stood yeah. to the side while he walked yeah. out <laughs> they have a designated location for all things gluten yeah <laughs> Oh god. Some high level like gluten stuff going on here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Serious, man. So, <laughs> anyways, I got through the night. Everything was fine after after the gluten was outside of the house. So. <laughs> oh, you recently invested in a uh uh in a in a blower, right? A leaf blower? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I've been I've been toying with this for many years because it's like, you know, once, you know, being Latin and buy, buying a leaf blower is kind of a serious deal. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like your the Latin last name of Garcia, card. it's pretty much unavoidable. Yeah, it's unavoidable. So it's like, yeah. you know, as soon as you get that leaf blower, it's like done. It's like you got your gardener card. Yeah. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you are, you are Jesus now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my savior and my gardener <laughs> i bet it's a so, lot more efficient though huh you know what 25 minutes of sweeping the driveway or five minutes with a blower <laughs> yeah 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 and you can but, do the um uh the patented uh just blow it onto your neighbor's lawn oh yeah that's the beauty of it it's not yeah. my problem anymore <laughs> yeah yeah so you essentially take you know 50 percent of uh one side and blow it onto your neighbors and 50 percent of the other and blow it onto theirs and now yeah. your house looks fucking immaculate yeah because oh, they have the way, their get, leaves plus yeah. yours yeah oh, oh not to mention that you get about 10 percent of it on all the cars parked outside <laughs> oh that's a, that, yeah that's a, that's also another pro move yeah yeah so. <laughs> completely <laughs> forgot i'm like Oh, I'm really dirtying these cars all over. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I, I parked down the street in anticipation of this. They should have known. Yeah. 
Yeah, they should have known, of course. Yeah, but I felt yeah. bad. I'm like, oh no, I'm like, because this is my first time blowing. Yeah, I'm not like I don't do this like very not a often. Professional I'm blower, fact, huh? I, 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 matter of fact, I think this is the first time I've ever blown. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I got kind of I'm like, is anybody watching? I got dirt on the cars. So I'm like trying to like blow down the cars. I'm like making it worse. <laughs> Like, oh shit. I'm like, I'm like, I need a t-shirt. This is my first time blowing. <laughs> Sorry. You guys should know like, I'm gonna do this every, once every uh two to seven days and anticipate the very moment it's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't know why well, they're parking there. Dirt. There was kind of dirt, you know, in the driveway as well. Not to, not, you know, not only leaves. <laughs> there's yeah, like yeah. there's like four cars all full of dirt now. And I, <laughs> I kind of scurried in the house. Hopefully they didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who did that. <laughs> yeah, I said, there's like at least four people coming out. They're going to be pissed. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to go and blow the dirt off the cars, but I'm like, I'm just going to make it worse if I'm blowing the cars like in the middle of the street with a blower, you know, in a Mexican <laughs> hat. I mean, dude, I'm about to get yelled at. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so, but hey. They work. <laughs> I never realized how well they work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should just uh, call them like not my problem anymore machines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not in my backyard. <laughs> not in my backyard. <laughs> not all in day yours. in yours. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. What? Um, you know, oh, how's the um? Yeah. Uh, how's the Airbnb going? Oh man. Woo. Yeah. It, it. You know, everybody makes it sound all easy, but no, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, I've already booked, you know, for my place here in the States, that is, because I have the other one going in Colombia. Um, but there's just a lot of little things um, that you have to do. And okay, I we'll go into the one at your house first, and then let's talk about mm -hmm. Colombia. So you got uh, a spare room in, in your house and you put yeah, a little kitchen private kind entrance. Of thing in there, yeah. private entrance. Yeah, uh, you've already got that one booked, right? And so basically, right. you're coming down here to Nicaragua here in a few days. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that, uh, as soon as you leave, you're going to have a girl mm -hmm. manage it. And uh, you're going to be renting it out, right? Correct. Yes. Perfect. And so yeah. she's going to clean and uh, yes, are, are you managing the bookings? Or is she? Or both? No, you? I'm managing the booking. So but okay. I, I um, she's a co host um, for the property. Okay, so so she has access, you know, to everything. So you know, and contact information and everything. So since she'll be staying on the, the premises as well. So yeah, so um, and she's done the Airbnb game before, right? This correct. is correct. She's a, yeah, easy Sally that you hired off off the corner in the you no, know, no, she yeah, I didn't. She didn't drunken Friday night or anything. It wasn't like that. So yeah, okay, so she has okay. she has experience with this. And um, matter of fact, she actually taught me um, quite because there's a lot of you have to learn the Airbnb, just you know, just the GUI interface, how things work, setting yeah, the up software, messaging. the game. Yeah, you know, and it you know just takes. It's not hard, but it just you just need to know how to do things and um, and just kind of what people like want you know, and I, I just, you know, what do I want when I go to a place, you know, I want fresh coffee, want some, my choice of uh, sugar, some creamers and, you know, um, clean bathroom, obviously just, you know, just all these, you know, things, and, you know, just trying to make everything as comfortable as possible. So I believe I've done a really good job to this point, but nobody has stayed yet. So, uh, we'll see soon though. So, but they booked. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, it, it looks, you know, oh, the pictures were really important as well. So it just took some time to, you know, get some good pictures. Did you and take the so, pictures or did she? Yeah, or? I did. I just did them with the iPhone filter really? and okay. yeah, they came out great. And I was really happy. Everybody else seems, I mean, it looks really good. So altogether, I'm pretty happy with everything. Um, but again, it's just a lot of like little things, you know, um, lock boxes and, um, you know. Oh just, yeah, the key, keyless entry with the Keyless uh, door entries code. and, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but uh, just getting used to the process as of right now. So, so far so good, uh, accomplished that. And then the Columbia one should be going online in about, hopefully about two, about two to three weeks. Um, I mean, I, I, I wish it was next week, but you know, I gotta be realistic since I'm not there. I think it's pretty cool that while you're going to be down here in Nicaragua, uh, mm -hmm. someone's going to be paying you rent and taking care of your BB in Santa Barbara. <laughs> you know? Right? That's pretty, that's pretty slick. That's pretty slick, dude. 
Yeah. Like the, yeah. I'm just trying to cover my dog kennel costs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you doing with Chacho? Chacho the vampire oh, dog. Oh, man. Well, if, I was, well, just kind of FYI for anybody who has like an older dog, if he's like mm-hmm. over 16. Or if yeah, he happens it, to be almost 20 years old and somehow he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If he's living <laughs> on borrowed time. <laughs> <laughs> if he only wakes up at like 12 one o'clock at night <laughs> kind <Yeah>. of vampire <laughs> power dog yeah uh, um yeah so i had to have an interview with the vet they had to call me like it was this pro i had to wait like three days and you know it, it was like this whole thing that he has to get approved to be in the kennel and they're oh, like wow. you need to bring a t-shirt with your smell on it and i'm like oh, jesus I, I i told the vet i told the vet on the phone i'm like you know, you're really making me feel like a terrible person for putting him in a kennel for a couple If you of need weeks, a right? shirt that smells like me, that's a, wow. <laughs> yes. Is he going to be in yeah. solitary confinement for 30 days? No, no, he's, uh, this is like a, it's a, like a, they do, um, it's a veterinarian clinic, but they actually, they actually um, board dogs and, you know, it's a really nice place, but um, I'm definitely in the wrong business because they charge like 60 to $80 a day, a lot of wow. these places. For a yeah, dog. Like, yeah minimum sixty dollars a day so wow. i'm clearly in the wrong well, that's business. that's that's food and and his board right no or, you have to bring their food you gotta bring their fucking food oh yeah you gotta bring their food they don't feed your dog wow yeah we're definitely in the wrong business so i think the next uh podcast we're going to be interviewing um dog boarding owners <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because I need to get in on this game. It's sixty dollars minimum. Oh god, a dog. Whoa. I'm like, I don't even well, need they, that many they, dogs. They probably take them for walks every day and stuff. Right? No, that's extra. Oh really? Yeah, eight dollars extra to walk per per play wow. per for play time. <laughs> yeah, there's all these add-on fees, so you you can get over a hundred bucks real easy. Wow. Real easy. Yeah. If wow. you want your dog, like, I mean, there's room for them to go out and roam around and everything, but if you want them walked and, you know, like a little extra care, you're paying for that. Wow. Yeah, huh. it is no joke. I don't know if it's the same in other states, but in California, it's <laughs> like, you know, they, I got to open up like a pet hotel. <laughs> Dude, and that's for every dog. How many dogs do they have in this place? I don't even, I mean, they're summertime. I know they're pretty full. I mean, they got to have at least 25 dogs. Like, I mean, they got, I mean, I, I get Chacho groomed at this place called Camp Canine uh-huh. and yeah, Get they're 70. Yeah. They're like $70. They're really reasonably priced for getting his nails cut and groomed. And they're really, they're really great place, but you know, they're, they're sad. They're 70. I'm getting a deal. <laughs> you must have just recently had him uh, clip because I don't hear the, uh, the patented uh, Chacho clicking. In yeah. The he click. He, yeah. I tell people he's only doing one of two things. Either he's either clicking or he's licking. He's licking. <laughs> <laughs> and if he ain't doing one of those two things, he's asleep <laughs> uh. and he's asleep. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember you got that little uh, uh, collar on him that is essentially a fart machine that you can control with your phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that when I have guests over. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Oh, it sounds like the dog is just farting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was just a kind of a prank I pulled. So, I, uh, so I, have we, we told people about that before? I don't think we have. No. Where'd oh, you get it on? So you, guys were over for, you guys were over for Super Bowl, right? Was it the Super That's Bowl right. Party? It was Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have everybody over for, for Super Bowl. So I played this prank on my little my little nephews during Christmas time. I like taped a, <laughs> I taped one of these little mini speakers that you get on Amazon for like I don't know what do you get. They're like I don't know ten bucks. It's like yeah. the smallest speaker. So I like you know pretend like I was giving him a hug and I duct taped some uh, a speaker to his back. <laughs> <laughs> And then they have like a fart machine app. And so the kids are running around and then I'm just like kind of controlling it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so That's everybody thinks the kid's farting all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I just upped the ante and I put it around the dog collar when you guys came over for Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah, every time you hit it, Chacho looked up at everyone and he was just like, yeah, this isn't funny anymore, but everyone was laughing at him. <laughs> I think he farted. <laughs> 
But what was funny is everybody in the whole place thinks that the dog's just like farting all over the place, but he's really not. <laughs> <laughs> it was great when uh, your buddy's girlfriend was like, what are you feeding him? There's really something wrong that you're feeding him. <laughs> <laughs> she was convinced because he was, because, oh my, yeah, she was convinced that he was, <laughs> there was something really wrong with him. <laughs> She's like, what do you, what do you feed him? It's not right. Yeah, yeah, you gotta change his diet. Something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you would just hit the fart machine again. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. I'm like, it doesn't smell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff good so, stuff anyways it's a good prank for all you out there <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's somebody. <laughs> quite funny yeah. yeah you know when they, they uh yeah I, I think he just said like that his collar has like a, a little shocker or something if he gets too close to the boundary <laughs> 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 so, um, oh you know you and i were talking last night and uh sorry i got sidetracked with the chacho but uh, back to no airbnb yeah. um with um cash flow you know, like mm -hmm. you were talking about like, okay, can you buy a house somewhere in the US, US for a hundred grand and get a cash flow of 500 bucks a month? <laughs> yeah, um, good luck. Right? Uh, or you could get an Airbnb for under 10K uh, down in uh, uh, Columbia uh, and cash flow 500 or a thousand a month, right? Well, over a thousand. Or over a thousand. Well you know? over a thousand, yeah. Yeah, so kind of go into that, you're, you're, cash flow well the, the kind of logic and that's an arbitrage thing so mm -hmm. it's like instead of buying places obviously i mean i obviously this isn't i'm not the first person to do this but um you know buying a place here in the states it's like okay well how much am i gonna have to spend you know if you want like investment property cash flow obviously you don't get you know appreciation but you know if you take that ownership on some of these properties you know if you find a, a good sweet place you know honduras i don't know costa rica wherever uh you know just take ownership for it but you know kind of have to have your boots on your on the ground and have a system set up obviously but if you can you know get all those things in place uh you can get a place you know, pretty dirt cheap and get anywhere from 500 up upwards of two thousand dollars you know per place cash flow you know and yeah. You don't, I mean, you can take it for a year, pay, it'll pay itself off in about six months. Obviously, you know, I've already gone through furnishings and, you know, air conditioners and TVs and, you know, getting everything set up. The calculation as of right now, it's about a six month payoff. So okay. in six months, give or take a month or two, then you'll be, in it'll, it'll pay for back. itself. And then after that, um, you know, it's cat, it'll be cash flowing in about that time period. Nice, nice. Yeah, what? and then if you're able to get more, you get another. Let's say you know you get that up and up. Um, you, you're paying those off. You know, two places paying off the other place a lot faster. So you know, obviously, the more you have, the the quicker you can get those paid off. You know, and get well. If you get this one, and then, or I mean, when you get this one uh, uh, mm -hmm. going in six months, now you're at even. In another six months, then you could buy one free and clear, and have two at the same time that's just cash yeah flow. well yeah i'm actually planning on just you know maybe jumping the gun you know obviously it's a little bit more risk in doing that but you know i'm pretty comfortable with that at the at the, at the prices that we're able to get them for so just just until it's working and it's booked i'm comfortable moving on to the second one so oh, nice. uh, for myself um i'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive about it and because i know that i'm looking at a at a new building right now uh penthouse uh, overlooking the city has a gym infinity pool everything and i'm just waiting for them to be completed so yeah. as soon as that happens i'm going to jump in on that so i'll give some more details on that as it comes but that's not until august september so i'm going to be jumping i'm going to try to jump in on this on the next one you know before the first one's even paid off i just need to know that it works yeah 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 so cool cool and you got your girl down there doing a lot of the uh, leg work you got dnl right yeah, I got DNL uh, working with uh, actually Dane. So shout out to Dane. Dane is actually who I kind of partner with. He um, he's been a really great resource. So um, you know, real like minded, and he's actually helped me out quite a bit. Um, just kind of showing me some of the ropes, uh, how he does things, and um, just kind of following suit with that. And so it's it's kind of it's, it's it looks like it's going to be a really good symbiotic kind of relationship uh, with regards to the Airbnb. So nice. Nice.
Yeah. That's cool. That's encouraging. Yeah. That, uh, and I'll have more information on, you know, the ins and outs on a lot of this stuff. It's just, you know, this is all in the beginnings right now. So there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's some, uh, it's a bit of a learning curve, you know, in the beginning, especially trying to do something internationally as well. Um, not an easy task. Everything's in Spanish, you know, <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it's, it's, it's a whole different set of circumstances. Yeah. Well, you've been yeah. taking Spanish lessons a couple times a week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been pretty diligent. Well, I'm just like, hey, man, since, you know, speaking Spanish is fine, you know, and getting by and everything. But when you start doing business, that's a whole nother level, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, whole, it's a whole, it's like a whole new vocabulary almost, you know. So yes. it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yes. it, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It hasn't been easy, but, you know, I just have to, you know, just keep pushing through it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm two, three Spanish lessons uh, a week just trying to improve make things better um but for me it's worth it and i like learning so it's it's you know that makes it makes it good nice nice yeah my spanish has been getting a lot better just being out here you know and um yeah. i've had to develop a little bit of a different ear uh for spanish because the accent out here is a little bit different you'll you'll you know you'll, you'll you'll hear it right away they make yeah. their s's and their z's silent so they don't say izquierda they say izquierda. It, 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 okay, right, right. You know, uh, they don't say Costco. Like, I'm going to go to Costco. They say Coco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's silent, right? Yeah, let me get some of that Coco. Yeah, Coco. right? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Um, unless it's at the beginning of the word. Uh, mm. But if it's in the middle or at the end, then they forget just drop it. it. Yep. Wow, interesting. So it takes a little bit for your ear to, like, pick that up. Yeah. But so I do, guess we're all about that uh, Nika program, as they say, right? That's what we're on right now. You know, I think so. I think it's a um, generally speak. And we've gone over how much inflation is going to go up here over the coming years. And, you know, there's going to be some monetary change. Uh, and we're probably going to be off of the American dollar and onto something else. Uh, and I think right now it's relatively cheap. Uh, just like silver and gold are relatively cheap. I think land out here is relatively cheap and they don't see the tidal wave coming. Um, yeah. And uh, I think we can trade American dollars, which will, you know, in the future be worthless for physical land. I think it's a great hedge against the upcoming economy. I think it's a great hedge. You yeah. know, well, it's a depressed market right now as far as real estate's concerned. So I wish I wish it was that way here in the States. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's not. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's like um, uh, James Rickards in the, the book we talked about, uh, the new Great Depression. He was like, you know, there'll be areas where there's really good real estate buys and there'll be areas where there's horrible real estate buys, like where you and I live right now is horrible. But down here. I think it's great. I think, you know, we may not be hitting the exact bottom on San Juan. Who knows if there'll be multiple waves of COVID that will extend, you know, keep the tourists out for a while because it's a pain in the ass to get to this country yes. uh, with the COVID tests and all that stuff. Um, and may, maybe we're off by a few years, but uh, if this isn't the exact bottom, it, it's got to be damn close. Yeah, no, I'm real comfortable. And just for everybody out there, you know, um, you know, Steve and myself and, you know, we've, you know, kind of doing the due diligence, you know, lawyers, you know, re multiple real estate oh, yeah. agents, yeah. walking tons of properties, you know, talking to locals. So, you know, there's been a lot of legwork, you know, that's gone into this, you know, anytime you bring up the word Nika or Nicaragua, you know, all of a sudden people just, oh, political unrest. Oh my God, danger, Will Rogers, you know? So, <laughs> you know, there's definitely that element um, or people definitely, you know, there's kind of a little bit of a negativity, I, I would say, you know, because of that. But um, I, I, you guys aren't finding any of that. No, no, this is the safest uh, Central and South American country that I've personally ever been to. And you've been to a lot, Steve. I think I've been to every, no, I haven't been to one of the countries Bolivia. in Central America. Uh, and I've been to maybe half a dozen in South America. Um, yeah. But all of them, uh, th this one I feel the safest by far. Right. Um, you know, you're not going to get uh, shot or stabbed randomly and then robbed. It's 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 a game like uh, if you leave your, um, you know, your your money or something sitting on the table, there'll be a kid that'll come around behind you and distract you. And then his friend will grab it and run away. It's, it's like they, you know, but they're not going to stab you to take your money. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to be um, bleeding out in the street. No, no, no. It's not going to be like Tijuana or anything, right? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. Um, it's, uh, I like it a lot here. I think this is the country, dude. I really do. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I've been looking for well, it for the last 14 years and every, every time Joe and I travel and, um, I think I found it for me. For yeah. Me. yeah. You know, it's, uh, I like so it. Stop a lot. eating those parrot fish now, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just so you all know, Steve really wanted a place where he could go spear fishing until I told him that eating parrot fish was bad. Yeah. They, they <laughs> carry some toxin or something like that. What was it? <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be eating those reef fish, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. But, um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I think we should definitely get something. And especially with three of us, it's uh, less uh, capital investment, uh, you know, only a third risk for each one of us. Um, yeah. And something my dad brought up that I hadn't thought of is, is you know, it's kind of nice having three of us in that two votes always win, you know? So, if, yeah. uh, uh, you know, there's, it's, <laughs> you can't have a 50-50 split decision. <clears throat> so um, I kind of like that. Yeah, no, no, I think it's, uh, I think Nicaragua's, uh, you know, uh, well, I'll just give a little uh, kind of a backstory, you know, my thoughts. Um, when I was traveling, I used to travel to surf in Costa Rica, you know, years ago. And, you know, plots of land were just dirt cheap. And, you know, beers were 80 cents. Mm -hmm. And coffee, you know, was like 40 cents. And, you know, it was just, you know, was like uh was like cambodia <laughs> yeah yeah and i knew it at the time but i just wasn't you know i just wasn't there you know i didn't i didn't capitalize on it yeah um and it's to me the nicaragua and, they, and i'm not the only one to say this i mean a lot of people say this obviously um but you know the next you know it's the next costa rica but i really believe that it is you know it's, it has you know the surfing's even better um you know, it's just, it's just not built yet, you know? So I think a lot of those people um, that I would say, you know, would, you know, surf and things like that. It's just, it's just a new Costa Rica and the prices are depressed. It's it, to me, it's, it's Costa Rica, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. I think, I think you're right because um, they, we met a guy, uh, Hector, we ended up renting the house that he was in. He, he went mm -hmm. off to Mexico, but he, initially planned on going to Costa Rica. And so he went there, he's retired. He, he lives off social security. And the first bar he went to, they told him it was $7 for a beer. And he's like, what, you know? And uh, he said he was there, I think three days. And then he came to Nicaragua and then he went to a bar and the beer was a dollar. And he's like, okay, I think this is the spot. And he stayed here for yeah. six months. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, no, they used to be it, it, Costa Rica. It, there's really no price difference between like California yeah. and Costa Rica. It's it's crazy. Like the prices. Uh, I mean, when I went there the last time, you know, there's people walking around, you know, hey, you know, I think this is play. We should buy this million dollar property. There's like, you know, coffee, Starbucks and Range Rovers. Now it's like, I'm like, what happened to this place? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. I, I couldn't believe it when I went back, you know, years later, I was like, wow. So, um, but you know, you don't really have any of that yet. I'm pretty positive that will happen Yes. in Nicaragua. It's not, if it's more of a when, a when. but yeah. um, you know, as it stands right now, I think it, there's some good opportunities there to, to buy, you know, either land or house or, you know, um, and trade currency in, for something tangible land. Yeah. Trading you know? currency for, for tangible items, you know, like, like real estate and land. So yeah. Um, yeah, but people, I think there people are definitely have this a little, like I would say scared. I don't know if that's the best word to use, but you know, they're, you know, just because, you know, there's a little political stuff going on there a few years back, but you know, I kind of equate it to like, you know, Cancun, which I believe is pretty much owned by like all cartels, right? <laughs> it's like cartel money. You know, they don't really mess with the tourists. <laughs> That's their money. That's like bread and butter, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, like Nicaragua, yeah. you have tourism and you got cigars. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, yeah. just the way the waves out here down in San Juan del Sur. So now when this is laid out, like there's San Juan del Sur, that's that's the main town and it's kind of in a cove. There's right. no waves there. There's right. just a bunch of boats that park out and it's a very calm place. You can go swimming if you want or spearfishing. Um, then you go 
one cove north and there's another little beach and it has an undeveloped community there may be one like hotel up on the hill and a couple houses here and there but that's about it and then you go one cove north of that and it's even more sparse and there may not even be a bar selling beer on the on this giant cove of a beach you know that goes for a mile and there's just uh you know locals that kind of live a little ways away from the beach but there's no business or nothing and then you go north of that and then the road stops You know, and you go south and it's the same story. So each one of these coves, north and south of San Juan del Sur, we saw them all, are beautiful. And they have these amazing surfing waves and there's no one there surfing. And I'm like, it's only a matter of time before (laughs) that changes. And whether that's 10 years or whether it's two, uh, I, I don't see how... You know, it's going to have to be something weird for us to not win on this one. You know what I yeah, mean? I agree. It's going to be something effed up with the paperwork that the lawyer didn't find or something. And, and you know, worst case scenario, we lose it. Well, it's it's not the end of the world because, you know, okay, fine. But I think that chance is, is relatively low. Yeah, I, I like my odds. I like mine too. I really do. Yeah. So I, I think we're so, north of 80, 90%. Yeah. And for everybody out there um, as well, you know, buying property, it's really out there. I mean, you don't have to be, you can buy property. It's easy, you know, the lawyer, I mean, so, you know, you get, you know, lawyer, real estate agent. Um, it's, it's the, the process is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's held in uh, what's called, I believe it's a fee simple um, property. Oh, where you type. pay the lawyer 10% and then they hold yeah, it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the, yeah. So base and also too, Steve, um, the deposit. So when you first get, we there's a, is it t- it's ten percent, ten percent deposit you need to put down, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have about a month or two to to fill in the rest of the money, and then transferring the money um, doesn't seem to be too much of a, you know, it, it's all pretty, it's pretty much like the states, you know, yeah. from everything that I that I'm seeing so far. Um, it's it's not that difficult there's not like i mean i'll put it we're to you not this the way. first ones to do it what, yeah. what, another yeah. thing other than just looking at properties joe and i have been building this network of uh people that have already done what we want to do and uh so we can get advice all along the way and um yeah. you know it seems pretty straightforward yeah um, it does seem very straightforward um just right off and on. let me just make a note um i would probably never buy property in like Columbia <laughs> because <laughs> there's just a whole set of weird stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, but a hundred percent, I would buy a Nicaragua yeah. and I'm not saying I've just heard like Columbia. I'm just saying just cause I'm down there, but it's just, just so many like variables and greasing people. And like, there's just, you know, <laughs> Oh yeah. By the way, like I have to like, I had to grease my, the administration building where I'm doing my Airbnb. So that's part of the <laughs> so process as well. <laughs> yeah. So they, <laughs> no, everybody's in on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> they, yeah, just, they, they just want their 10 bucks a month or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So we have a whole system where we actually got to grease the guards and, you know, different little things. <laughs> and like, you know, so it is a, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> As long as it turns that dollar, (laughs) nothing illegal though. Nothing illegal guys. It's all legal. It's just, I would 100% feel comfortable purchasing in Nicaragua, but definitely I would have some serious concerns about anything I would buy in Colombia. (laughs) Okay. Good advice. (laughs) Good advice. (laughs) Just rent over there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I got a pretty good idea of which ones I think are the, are the best. And I'm anxious for you to get down here and see them. And, well, I am uh, working on it. Get your, you have a mind for that, you know, and you're very um, uh, good with, you know, once the place is built, interior decorating. Jesus, like your house in Santa Barbara is just phenomenal. Yeah, it's um, kind of. But also yeah. just having an eye for that stuff, you know, like you, you'll, I know you'll look at it and you'll just be like, okay, this needs to be Spanish style. Uh, it's going to be terraced right here. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's yeah. where your strength is really. The, the stripper pole will go here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The infinity <laughs> pool right there. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, Spa, mud room, steam yeah. room. Yeah, it's all good. I got it. No problem. Yep. Easy. Dra- Eyes dragon closed. Eggs. Dragon eggs. Dragon eggs. Area. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Water <started>. witcher hub. <laughs> <laughs> Plant some gnomes in the back. It's all good, Steve. Yes, yes. <laughs> Right on. So, cool. so this is all kind of a work in progress. Um, so, yeah, just more information as things go along the way, right? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, it, um, I think that's not everything. That's so if you want to retire, basically, if you want to retire on your social security, you have nothing else and you live in the States, Nicaragua, Nicaragua is not a bad option. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of guys here that through probably poor planning, all they have is social security <laughs> and they're getting, <laughs> through, uh, yeah, through poor financial planning. All they're getting is, well, you is, mean they're non-existent financial planning. <laughs> oh my God. That's going to be worth nothing here in five to 10 years. Uh, Fourteen to seventeen hundred dollars, and they were in a little two bedroom well, yeah, apartment. You, you and... told me what's the story, Steve? You guys, you guys met a gentleman out there um, who came from the states, and he has a girlfriend, and he was she has four kids. Are they his or needs? No, parents? they're all hers. Yeah, they're all her kids. <laughs> all her kids. So yeah. this gentleman moved from the United States, got a girlfriend with a wife. Four, they're married. A wife with mm -hmm. four kids, five kids. I'm sorry, five it, kids. It's either four or five. It's not less than. Does it really three. matter after three? It's four or more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At least four kids. Yes. <laughs> Supports yes. them all. Yes. <laughs> and smokes good cigars every day. <laughs> yeah, he has a hundred hundred cigar uh, a month habit. <laughs> like these are I mean, here in the states, they would be what like thirty forty dollars each, right? I would say between 20 and 35. So yeah. Okay. Uh, ballpark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And probably, you know, hangs out and does what he wants, eats when he wants. And he goes out to lunch every day to the same <laughs> coffee shop where coffee is 15 cords. A, uh, so that works out to be about 40 cents, a cup of coffee. If you want lunch, it's about a dollar 50 and that's like a tuna sandwich or uh, I got this bomber ass salad. It was the most expensive thing on the menu. And it was, I think $3 and 12 cents or something. It was, it was mind blow. It's, it's, it's almost free. I mean, I, so, yeah. I literally think I'm saving money by being here um, because you just don't spend any, I mean, it, you go out and just bottle service $12, you know, it's unbelievable. So, yeah. So someone who is anybody listening out there, I guess, right. Like if you're down and out, <laughs> you're not necessarily down and out, but if you didn't know, <laughs> planning whatsoever you're ready to like hey it's just too expensive here in the states <laughs> and you have like 1500 bucks a month on social security like you could actually live pretty good in nicaragua <laughs> yeah yeah you could <laughs> yeah <laughs> you could. just don't just don't be the guy and get five kids <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like i just don't know why you'd want to step into that program but uh, that's 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 uh, that's a whole nother Oprah. To each his own. That's uh, yeah. To each his own. Different strokes, different folks. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. So, but that's pretty amazing, though, that, that someone could do that. You know, like I, I, I think it's amazing. That it's even possible. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I, I, who would have thunk? No, who would have thunk it? Yeah. He has a car, yeah. a couple motorbikes. All wow. Paid for. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's totally doable. But um, anyways, I'm. Uh, I'm going to get going, I think, uh, to, uh, to wrap it up. Um, yeah. but so he's uh, got to go attend to his water witchers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to go it's a feed him. vacation. <laughs> yeah. It's a vacation. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, I think this was a good episode. I'm, 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 uh, uh, anxious to do one with you live while we're both down here. Oh um, yeah. Well, I'll be drunk by the way, but um, Steve, <laughs> Steve might be so I can almost guarantee I will have something in my system. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool. Well, thanks. Cool. Uh, thanks, Daniel. This was fun. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I got a motivational speech here that is, uh, I came across, uh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, it's a little bit longer, but um, um, I like yeah. it a lot and I hope you do too. So thanks cool. for tuning in. Here is your weekly motivational speech. I'm here to talk about success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. I mean, as you know, I was born in 1947 in Austria after the Second World War. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled onto my vision. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. But that was their vision, not mine. 
My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. Then one day I went to school. I remember I was 11 years old. And they showed a documentary about America. And there they showed in this documentary the huge skyscrapers, the high rises, the huge bridges, the six lane freeways, and all of this stuff in the same myself. That's where I want to be. I don't want to be around here with these little farmhouses and these little buildings. I want to be in America. One day after school, I walked by a store in Graz. So I went inside and I looked around and then I saw a magazine. I saw a bodybuilding magazine that had Reg Park on the cover. Reg Park was then a three time Mr. Universe. And I saw him on the big screen as Hercules. I read that and I said to myself, wow, this is the blueprint for my life. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to become a bodybuilding champion, just like Reg Park. I want to get into movies, just like Reg Park. And I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous, just like Reg Park. Do you know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going, that I'm going to become this bodybuilding champion just like him. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I was so relieved because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. So people always ask me when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard? five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. And I told people all the time, I said, because to me, I am shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. With the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You've got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You've got to have a purpose. Seventy-four percent hate their job in America. Now, this is not much different when you come to Europe. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and then all of a sudden if there's a job opening so they get that job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life. That is unbelievable if you think about it. So I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. It's like a medical student that studies and knows he wants to become a doctor. You know where to go. And the same thing is also in politics. I remember that in politics, I had a very clear vision that I will be the leader of California. This is as far as I could go because I was not born in America, so I could not run for president. So being the governor of the fifth largest state of, I should say the largest state, the fifth largest economy in the world was for me really the ultimate title, the ultimate accomplishment in politics. So even though people came up to me and says, why don't you go and run for something smaller? You're never going to make it. I ran for governor and then two months later, I became governor of the state of California. Again, because I had a very clear vision what I'm going to do with California. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers.
everything I ever did, the thing that they heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English. I studied the accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff all day long. I worked and I worked and I worked. And within a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron and The Villain. And then all of a sudden, I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis and by Universal Studio to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, the director was John Milius. He said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. It's just the reality of it is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this of you, you asshole. What do you know?